Welcome to Bytes of Code. In this video, we'll continue our personal assistant. Uh, we have the ability to talk to our computer and we can open programs and even search Google uh, for different things. We can open the browser, but we want to incorporate now GPT. We're going to incorporate GPT two different ways. We're going to do it with the GPT-3 model and then we're going to actually incorporate chat GPT. So we're going to have two different types of GPT, we can say, and then at the end of that, we will actually get the computer to speak to us. So we will be able to hear GPT's response. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm just going to add another LF here. Uh, in this case, we're going to say GPT. Uh, this is following a similar pattern as uh, open notepad, search Google for goodnight computer. I also want to make sure to import open AI. This is going to be the actual module that gets us the ability to get into GPT-3 or chat GPT. Now I'm going to actually use the API key. This is one of the first steps. Open AI key. So how to use that? We do open AI dot API underscore key. And this is going to equal one of your keys. So how to get here, you do platform.openai.com account API keys. And this is basically just the API key section of your OpenAI account. Now, just kind of a heads up, this is something that I will say costs money, but you are able to use this for like some sort of trial period. They give you a couple of dollars to use their API if you want to try it out. So we can go ahead and delete these or create new ones. But it's important to keep track of your API key because once you create it, it will only show you the API key once. So let's do an example, create new secret key. This is the API key here, and I'm only going to be able to see this once. So I'll copy it. For example, if this is the API key that I'm using, I am not able to actually open this back up and see what the full key is. So it's important whenever you're using API key in this case that you kind of copy it and put it off to the side. Of course, you can create new keys and whatever, and you can delete new keys. So it's not really that dangerous. If you forget the API key, you can just create a new one. Once we have that API key, we're just going to paste it right in here as a string. And then we're going to set up for GPT three. Got GPT three. So there are a couple diff different things we do here. We do model 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 engine not it there it is in this case we're going to do davinci because this is working with gpt3 not chat gpt query is going to equal something similar that we did uh, when we we're using our search for google uh, this is kind of splitting the string we're going to split it at the gpt T section and we're going to take the last half of the string uh, if this is kind of a little bit new uh, please take a look at the other video the previous one in the playlist where we actually go into a little bit of detail on how this split is working we're going to add a temperature temperature I feel like I get this spelt wrong pretty consistently equals 0 0.7 this is kind of the default values we can say and max tokens 256 this is kind of how long uh the response is going to be how the maximum of character number of characters we want the response to be so this is kind of the default setup for that engine now what we want to do is we want to generate a response it's going to be response equals openai.completion.create and inside this create we're going to put some variables in here uh, we're going to do model equals text dash da vinci dash 003 And that actually the text DaVinci that comes from right here. So you can play around with different types of models for from OpenAI's uh, GPT-3 section, but we're gonna use this one, text DaVinci, since it's kind of just the base GPT-3 model. So comma, 
prompt, we're going to add another uh, variable. This is going to be query. So this is going to be actually the string now that we have spoken. That is right here, line 43. This is, so this is actually going to be what we've said. And this is going into the prompt. Temperature equals, we're going to do our temperature variable and max tokens is going to equal our max tokens variable. So at this point, we have a GPT-3 set up and ready to take in our prompt. We're going to print the response dot choices. And this is going to be an array. This is how GPT kind of sends back the data. We're just going to strip all the white space off of this uh, response. So let's go ahead and give this a try. GPT, tell me a fun fact. So we were able to uh, accurately get that we said GPT, tell me a fun fact. So when it says GPT, we hook into this LF statement. And we kind of break this string up to just say, tell me a fun fact. That is what we're actually going to send in this query. Tell me a fun fact. And now we have a response. Let's go ahead and continue. Oh, this right here was not supposed to be string. Strip. GPT, tell me a fun fact. OK, so now we were able in this time to get a response from GPT-3. So the longest recorded flight of a chicken is 13 seconds. So now let's go ahead and use chat GPT. So what I want to do here is I want to actually see what the speech recognition grabs when I say chat GPT. Chat GPT. So this is kind of going to be, this is going to be what I want to code my, my next LF statement for. So we're going to do another LF. And it's going to say chat GPT. Again, we're following the same pattern in text.text.lower. So we have the import for OpenAI. We don't need to do that because we've already done that. If you haven't, go ahead and do the pip install OpenAI and do the import here. We're going to do the OpenAI.API key again. We're going to use the same API key. And this is going to be handled a little bit differently. Uh, we're going to have here a, an array, an empty array. It's going to be named conversation, conversation. And this is just going to be kind of keeping track of what we are saying in our conversation with ChatGPT. So here's kind of the defaults of what we're putting in. Uh, role user they have different examples but this is going to be kind of the basic uh, setup to go with we're going to do the exact same thing we've done before where we have query but instead of this we're going to do chat gpt Now the actual response is going to be a response equals openai dot chat completion dot create. And in this create, we, I don't know why, chat completion, there we go. And this create, we're going to have our model equals gpt dash 3.5 dash turbo comma and we're going to add one more this is actually going to be our prompt and with that we're going to have a 
uh, response ChatGPT response is a new variable. We'll do output. Uh, this is going to be the response variable, it's similar to the GPT-3. Uh, it's going to be kind of what we're looking for is going to be returned inside of an array. Uh, so choices, response, choices, zero, message, and the last one, content. And we'll just print this out so we can see what ChatGPT response is. So I'm actually going to change this after a couple of tests. I have trouble with it recognizing OpenAI, so I'm going to just use the word computer. And then that means here we also have to change this in order to just say to split whenever we see computer. So let's try it now. Computer, tell me a funny catchphrase. So we have here a response, and let's just go ahead and run through it, even though I had a breakpoint there. So we actually get a response from ChatGPT. So in this case, we have GPT using GPT-3, and we have ChatGPT using GPT-3.5 Turbo. So there is an issue with this way of coding for ChatGPT, and the problem is that this conversation gets lost whenever we lose this if condition. It only exists inside this scope. An example is I asked the computer who won the World Series in 2019, and I asked also a computer how did they win, and I pretty much lost my context. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take this conversation array, and we're just going to move it pretty much towards the very top. So we're going to keep this whole conversation in our Python uh, personal assistant. So if we try this again, computer who won the World Series in 2015. Computer, how did they win? So now asking who won the World Series in 2015 and asking again, computer, how did they win? And we see that we actually have some context now that ChatGPT is able to take this, this phrase, this prompt, how did they win? And they're able to associate, ChatGPT is able to associate this prompt with its previous prompt, which is Kansas City Royals won the World Series in 2015. Now let's do one more thing. Let's incorporate the Pi TTS X3. This is going to be a text to speech engine. And what we're going to do here is we're going to create a function. We're going to start with getting all the text to speech engine stuff initialized. So that's going to be a variable called engine. And we're going to set that equal to pytsx 3 dot init. Then we're going to set the rate of speech. This is going to be how fast we want the speech to be. So we would get the property first, rate, and then we would be able to set the property. What I found is this value is pretty realistic. I feel this is like a good rate of speech, how fast or how slow that the computer is talking. We're going to set the voice. This is going to be the same uh, as the rate. We're going to do a voices variable. It's going to be equal to the engine dot get property. And it's going to be a property called voices. And then we're going to do engine.set property. The voice property, we're going to set it to voices. And I thought this was a, just a normal voice. So this is all just kind of making it a little bit realistic. And now here is our function to speak. We're just going to say speak 
text and that's the uh, property that we take in with that text we do our engine dot say and we give it the text we want to speak and we also are going to do engine run and wait so that it kind of helps to stop like 20 different things for being said at once so now we have our function speak we're going to go all the way down here and we're going to do a speak chat gpt response uh, we're also going to do it here too let's do a speak I don't know why I can't speak this response to. So, so let's go ahead and start with ChatGPT. Computer, tell me why Python is important to learn. As an AI language model, it would provide you below points. One easy to learn. Compared to other programming languages, Python is an easy language to learn. So we kind of get the idea. Um, that one took a little bit longer, but we have a lot more uh, res uh, response text from ChatGPT uh, than previously. So at this point, we have a personal assistant that can use GPT-3, it can use ChatGPT, and we also have the ability to speak from the computer, uh, from a given text, it can speak, and we can hear our computer basically talking to us. You can use the same speak if you want, and you can say things like, in other different types of if statements, you can say opening notepad, and you can just use this wherever you want. If this is your personal assistant. As long as you have used this speak function, you can just pass in any string to it. So we'll stop the video here. In our next video, we'll start to incorporate Spotify in our personal assistant, seeing how we can control Spotify with Python. But thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any comments or you're having trouble with any of this code, please leave a comment down in the comment section. If you enjoy any part of this video, please drop a like. Please subscribe to keep track of this playlist. And I hope to see you at the next video.